your local network. Now, from the area's leader in live local news, this is WYLN News, the area's number one source of live local news and information in Luzerne, Schuylkill, Carbon, and Columbia Counties. WYLN News starts now. Good evening and thank you for joining us on WYLN News. I'm Paula Dagnan. Hazelton police officers responded to a robbery on 3rd and Alter Streets on Saturday. A 39-year-old male victim was robbed at gunpoint by three men wearing hooded sweatshirts. The victim said the three men fled on foot toward Alter Street where officers were just two blocks away. The victim provided a description of the robbers to an officer who also revealed he was robbed of $300 cash and his Pennsylvania identification card. Officers observed two males matching the description shortly after in the area of 7th and Alter Streets and noted one man dropping a wad of money while trying to flee police. 18-year-old Irvin Jimenez Rodriguez and a 16-year-old male were stopped by police. They were taken into custody without incident and taken to City Hall for processing. The third male robber was not located. Jimenez Rodriguez issued a statement admitting to his involvement in stealing the victim's belongings, charges of criminal conspiracy to commit robbery, theft, receiving stolen property, and other other charges were approved by the district attorney's office, including the juvenile to be charged as an adult. A man tried fleeing police during a traffic stop in Hazleton on Sunday. 52-year-old Michael Ubandini of Archbald was driving a 2005 white Chevy pickup truck when he was stopped by a Hazleton police officer in the area of 2nd and P Streets. Ubaldini fled the vehicle after a Hazleton officer activated his overhead lights and siren. His passenger, 39-year-old Nicholas Hall of Hazleton, fled the vehicle at the intersection of North North James and West Oak Streets, where he was tackled by an officer shortly after and placed into custody. Ubaldini was arrested after a police pursuit. He was then found with about 100 bags of heroin at the scene and taken to Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton for minor injuries. He's being charged with fleeing and eluding, possession of a controlled substance, resisting arrest, and other charges. Hall being charged with position, possession of drug paraphernalia. Ubaldini was transported to the Luzerne County Correctional Facility for overnight arraignment. The vehicle impounded by a towing company. A traffic stop this morning in Hazleton led to the arrest of a fugitive. A black Audi bearing Pennsylvania registration was stopped by a Hazleton police officer in the area of 4th and Wyoming streets, where the operator of the vehicle was identified as 34-year-old Gabrielle Feliciano Fonseca. The officer on the scene called for backup who immediately responded and found that Fonseca had a suspended driver's license and was a fugitive with an active warrant for failure to appear on possession with intent to deliver a controlled substance. The fugitive was in possession of a 9mm firearm with a 13-round magazine with another 30-round magazine loaded with one bullet. He also had a small amount of cocaine with him and, police say, had been drinking. Fonseca was transported to Lehigh Valley Hospital Hazleton for a blood alcohol concentration after submitting sobriety tests. After the testing, he was brought back to City Hall. There he was processed on the outstanding warrant for PWI charges, charges to be filed pending result of alcohol testing. He was processed and taken to the Luzerne County Correctional Facility for processing. An autopsy was held on a newborn found dead in a home in Shikshini over the weekend earlier this afternoon. The Luzerne County Coroner says more tests have to be done before they have answers. Investigators say the child was born Friday at a home in Union Township but did not survive. The child's mother was in Wilkesbury when she was taken to a hospital where it was learned she had given birth. When investigators went to the home, they found the deceased child.
Hazleton could once again use its parks and playgrounds as collateral as they intend to borrow $1 million through an arrangement with the city's redevelopment authority. The intention comes with the redevelopment authority's intent to pay a running deficit in the general fund to restore money borrowed from a pension fund account. Council will vote on the first reading of an ordinance on Wednesday for securing close to $1.1 million of guaranteed lease revenue notes through the Redevelopment Authority. If approved by Council on three readings, the borrowing would be similar to the city's process used back in 2011 when they secured $5.6 million through a lease rental financial deal with the Redevelopment Authority. Several other financial scenarios have also been reviewed by the authority. Budget work sessions continue as part of the Luzerne County budget process. Underway at the Luzerne County Courthouse, the district attorney and judicial services and records are being discussed. The proposed 2019 budget contains a proposed 3% tax hike for residents. It must be approved by the beginning of December. Coming up on WILN News, we are closing in on Election Day. But first, let's take a look at our seven-day forecast. Overnight, light rain and fog with a low of 45 for Election Day. Keep the umbrella handy, but not too bad. The high of 59, and it looks as though we're in for 40s throughout the rest of the week. Stay with us. Dishonest Danny Wolf will say anything to win, just like Pelosi told him to. He calls himself a moderate, but admits he voted for Hillary Clinton. Said he wasn't a lobbyist for cruel puppy mills. State records prove he lied. Dishonest Danny can't be trusted. Dan Users, one of us, raised his family here, helped grow a local business here, and shares our local values. Dan Muser, he'll keep our country moving forward. I'm Dan Muser, and I approve this message. Hi, I had a very minor uh, fender bender tonight in an unreasonably narrow fast food drive through lane. Don't worry, I have everything handled. I already spoke to our Allstate agent, and I know that we have accident forgiveness, which is so smart on your guys' part. Like, the fact that they'll Four just... weeks without the car. Okay, yep, good night. With accident forgiveness, your rates won't go up just because of an accident. Switching to Allstate is worth it. Visit your local Allstate agent, the McNeilis Agency in Hazleton at 1092 North Church Street, or in Hometown in the Hometown Village Square. At Grand Central, our family has been supplying your family with quality brand name furniture, mattresses, and appliances for over three generations. Whether you choose from our excellent selection of Lazy Boy, Catnapper, or England furniture, or from our fantastic selection of Sealy and Stearns and Foster mattresses, we guarantee total comfort in every room of your home. With expert advice, everyday low prices, plus interest-free financing for up to 60 months. From our family to your family. Grand Central and Hazleton, everything to make your house a home. There are races to watch in the midterm election. The race for the new 9th Congressional District, one of the most heated. Republican Dan Muser facing off against Democratic candidate Denny Wolf. The two found themselves in a war of words. Today, WILN spoke with both candidates via phone about what sets them apart from the other. I think the thing that distinguishes me the most from my opponent is I was born and raised right here in the 9th Congressional District. I'm a dairy farmer. Uh, our family tree, we were dairy farmers back as far as you can go. Uh, that means that uh, you have rural values, uh, work ethic that's second to none, uh, integrity in telling the truth matter, and being a problem solver. That's all part of being born and raised on a dairy farm right here in the 9th. Uh, my opponent was uh, born and raised in Long Island, moved here and still doesn't live in the 9th Congressional District unless he's moved there in the last week or two. The contrasts with my opponent are stark. Uh, I will serve in Congress as a results-oriented conservative. Uh, I will work hard and smart uh, to assure the policies that are in place, the pro-growth and fiscally responsible positions that are in place, uh, will be advanced. Uh, my opponent uh, has revealed himself over the course of this campaign as being a very liberal Democrat. 
uh, he does his best to come across as kind of an old Chuck's Denny, as I refer to him, but he is, uh, and even as a moderate, but his views are honestly no different than Nancy Pelosi's. Now both Muser and Wolf have worked in state government, Muser serving as Secretary of Revenue, Wolf as Secretary of Agriculture. Both say they would be the best choice to represent the 9th District in Washington. My main message is that I will go to Washington and do the work to continue to move our country forward. Our president has put us on the right track. All the data supports this. And more importantly, the people of the 9th District tell me they are happy with their incomes going up and how their businesses are expanding and how their families are doing better off. We certainly have more work to do, and we need all people to be, to be included in this uh, great American comeback. Well, I'd like people to know that uh, I really feel that the average citizen, middle-class America, does not have a seat at the table today when it comes to Congress. We have too many millionaires down there, and you look at any of the policies that they have passed in the last couple of years, it's a reflection of being operated and managed and represented by people that are very wealthy. We need people from middle-class America that knows what it's like to raise five children on a dairy farm and send them to college like I did. Uh, we know, need uh, people that know what it's like to work hard for a living and know the value of a dollar. Election day is tomorrow and the polls open at 7 a.m. and the candidates don't stop there. The popular 8th congressional district race between Democratic candidate Matt Cartwright and Republican candidate John Schrinn has gotten a lot of attention. Both Cartwright and Schrinn have also brought in heavy hitters for their campaigns. Cartwright having former Vice President Joe Biden, Schrinn having current Vice President Mike Pence and being endorsed by President Donald Trump. Cartwright's number one priority in office to bring additional good-paying, family-sustaining jobs to northeastern Pennsylvania. He's also providing health and retirement security for seniors and veterans, as well as making health care affordable for working families. That includes bringing down the price of prescription drugs. Schrinn's focus in office, economic growth with his business background, immigration by securing our borders, and infrastructure by working to rebuild our nation's roads, bridges, and airports. He would also work on bringing high-speed internet to rural areas in Northeast Pennsylvania. With less than 12 hours until tomorrow's general election polls open for voters, we have a highlight for both party candidates running for U.S. Senate. Democratic candidate Bob Casey Jr. and Republican candidate Lou Barletta battle it out for the U.S. Senator. Both Casey and Barletta have brought in their own heavy hitters to campaign for them. Casey again with former Vice President Joe Biden, Barletta with President Donald Trump. The current U.S. Senator Casey's top three priorities in office include increasing access to affordable health care, protecting the programs Pennsylvanians depend on, on and helping working families get ahead. This means stopping the Trump administration's sabotage of our health care system, defeating Republican attacks on Medicare, Medicaid, and Social Security, and fighting to raise wages, protect the rights of organized labor, and eliminate the obstacles holding working families back. The former small business owner, mayor of Hazelton, and member of Congress, Barletta's top three priorities in office are keeping Pennsylvania's families safe, protecting Pennsylvania jobs, and standing up for the men and women who serve our communities. More than anything, he says, people want someone willing to fight for them when no one else will, which is what he's always done, and that's why he says he's running for U.S. Senate. Then there's the race for Pennsylvania governor, that between Democratic candidate Tom Wolf and Republican candidate Scott Wagner. That's been a back and forth mudslinging contest, both parties zigzagging throughout the, the government. Current Governor Wolf's top three priorities in office, investing in our kids and schools, growing jobs and supporting workers, and protecting our seniors and access to health care. Wagner said that overhauling government impositions is one of his top priorities, as well as eliminating property taxes and redesigning 
our education system. And then the 119th state legislative district race between Democratic candidate Gerald Mullery and Republican candidate Justin Behrens recently took a nasty turn when Luzerne County residents began receiving campaign mailers linking Behrens to a neo-Nazi sympathizer from the Democratic Party. The Democratic Party contacted Mullery about the mailer after the Tree of Life synagogue hate crime in Pittsburgh. Mullery's top three priorities in office are development of attraction and retention of family sustaining jobs, the elimination of property taxes and quality education, as well as safe neighborhoods for our families. Barons will prioritize jobs and effective job retraining programs, fiscal responsibility regarding the budget process, and all state spending by eliminating wasteful spending to hold the line on taxes and reforming state government, including heavy business taxes and politicians' perks to restore the public's trust in state government. And again, tomorrow is Election Day. Polls open at 7 a.m. and will remain open till 8 p.m. And of course, after the polls close, you can get all the information here on WYLN TV as well as from our Facebook page. Coming up now on June Dale's News Choice, Pennsylvania State Police are collecting coats to help the community in Community and You, plus a recap of the Hazelton Williamsport game. Don't go away. This week on Topic A, I'm joined by Ting O, oh, physical therapist from Physical Therapy and Balance Center. We talk about the difference between their center and other physical therapy places around our area, what sets them apart, and how they are helping combat concussions and our youth. All that coming up this week on Topic A, only on WYLN. Chura's Auto Sales has been serving the area with quality vehicles since 1954. Chura's Auto Sales is known as your friendly dealer and now in their fourth generation and voted the best used car dealer by the readers of Standard Speaker Choice Awards. John Chura would like to thank everyone that voted for his business. When you need a quality pre-owned vehicle, choose from a large selection at Chura's 570-454-7229. advertising a student like me pitching you the same old ideas but I'm not gonna do that instead I'm gonna tell you what you can do with a Penn State degree you can help anyone go anywhere create and with 20 campuses to choose from you'll always feel at home look Penn State is amazing but your best years are just beginning come find out for yourself On WYLN, everyone, and Gary Pern. I'm very pleased to have with me Trooper uh, Dave Peters from the Pennsylvania State Police. And Trooper Peters, today we're going to talk a little bit about a great initiative you guys are doing, and that's a coat drive yes. uh, this winter season. And first of all, tell us how this came about and, and why get involved. Uh, a few years back, we, we put together a coat drive with the local churches, and uh, it just always seems at this time of year, you, you know, you could drive down the street or, you know, anywhere, and you see mm -hmm. people not having the appropriate apparel for the outdoors. Um, so we thought, you know, let's look at a different community venue. I mean, everybody always expects us to be there for traffic collisions and things like that, mm -hmm. but what else can we do as a community service unit to help our community, help our people that are served? So. A coat drive, yeah, we decided a coat drive was something um, that we could organize uh, rather quickly. 
And this is a great thing that's going on. So you guys are collecting new or gently used coats along with some other items as well for the winter season. Yes, uh, newly purchased blankets, hats, and gloves. Uh, the goal is to just not, not take away from any organization that already does this on an mm -hmm. annual basis. We know there's some great organizations that do that, but just be another resource or another venue that if people don't have one at their church and mm -hmm. they wanted to do this, they can give it to us. Um, so we're collecting them at our station. All the uh, items that are collected are going to be distributed within the county to organizations in that county to which the stations are reside in. And you have a couple stations within Troop N that are, are with Hazleton, correct? Absolutely. Um, so it's at our Hazleton station. Mm -hmm. uh, our Bloomsburg Barracks is also set up for one, our Lee Heighton Barracks, which is in Carbon County. Um, our Mar Monroe County would have our Fernridge station as well as our Swiftwater, excuse me, Stroudsburg station. Um, but we also uh, have the luxury of having Troop P Wyoming. Okay. Uh, that's another uh, headquarters up in Luzerne County and they, they want to be a part of it so they can also drop them off there. Wonderful. So this is uh, another great way of you guys being able to do more than just uh, the policing, but yes. you know, you guys are always there to help out. And this is always great because sometimes you see uh, kind of firsthand some things that may be going on. So this is another great way of saying, you know what, we see this need, we want to make sure people are taken care of. A absolutely. Like I said, you know, you see people walk in and, you know, it's, Sometimes kids just don't want to wear a winter coat, yeah. but you know what about that family that can't afford that winter coat because um, you know times are tough. They mm -hmm. got to worry about heat in the house and food in the house and other supplies. You know we want to help those organizations out there that are that are providing items for these people so they can keep warm. Uh, and a deadline for people to drop stuff off at the barracks is throughout uh, our area? November 16th. November 16th, okay. Yeah. So again, if you have a, a new or gently used uh, winter coat and new hats, gloves, uh, blankets like that to uh, donate, you could do that at one of the troops. Uh, all the information's up on your screen. You have until the 16th here in November to get all that donated to the Pennsylvania State Police so they can get it out to those who are in need. Thank you so much Thank for coming on. Thank you very much on. for being here. Thank Thank you very much. They, and thank you guys. We will see you next time here on Community New on W Island. Walk into the region's most trusted health network. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. You'll meet Jim Joseph, a gentleman with a rich history in serving his country and his community. He's going to help enlighten you on services that are available for veterans and how they can seek good chiropractic care. His story and his advice this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us. Let's get the highlights uh, that came from Friday night when the Williamsport took on Hazleton area in the first round of high school football playoffs. Our Ryan Osachi has that recap. Friday night, the Hazleton Cougars hosted the Williamsport Millionaires in the District 2-4 Class 6A semifinal game. Both teams were 5-5 five five coming into this first round playoff matchup. During week four of the regular season, Williamsport beat Hazleton in a 64-6-3 shootout. With that loss in the back of their mind, Hazleton came out firing. On the third offensive play, quarterback Ryan Wolk threw a bubble pass to Damon Horton, who had raced 59 yards to the end zone, giving Hazleton an early 7-0 lead. Less than five minutes later, Damon Horton would take the handoff from Ryan Wolk and find himself again sprinting down the sideline. This time, a 75-yard touchdown run, his second of the night, and a 14-0 lead for Hazleton. 
On the next offensive possession for Hazleton, Ryan Wolk threw a 55-yard touchdown pass to Jacob Hunsinger as he was able to jog into the end zone. A blocked extra point would make the score 20 to nothing. With about 4.30 left in the second quarter, Damon Horton scored his third touchdown of the night on a 19-yard run. A failed two-point conversion will make the score 26-0. But Williamsport still had some fight in them as freshman quarterback Dallas Grice threw a pass to the end zone only to have it deflected and caught by Braden Mazzante for the 16-yard touchdown reception just 12 seconds before halftime. Going into halftime, the score was 26-7 Hazleton. Williamsport continued their momentum into the second half as Dallas Grice found Braden Mazzante again for a 9-yard touchdown pass. The extra point would be blocked, making the score 26-13. Hazleton would answer right away as Damon Horton would rush six yards for his fourth touchdown of the night. And with over five minutes left in the fourth quarter, Horton would score his fifth touchdown of the night on a seven-yard run, putting Hazleton up 40-13. to <laughs> Hazleton would score one more time as Kevin Molusky rushed for a two-yard touchdown with 132 left in the game. Hazleton would get their payback over Williamsport with a final score of 47-13. Hazleton will play Delaware Valley this Friday for the District 2 6A championship game. The winner will then advance to the state playoffs. Reporting in Hazleton for WYLN News, I'm Ryan Osachi. Thanks, Ryan, and go Cougars. PennDOT announcing all driver's license and photo centers, including its full service center in Harrisburg, will be closed this Saturday, November 10th through Monday, November 12th. That is an observance of Veterans Day. Customers can still obtain various services, including all forms, driving manuals, and other publications online through PennDOT's website, which is www.dmv.pa.com. Gov. The online services are free of charge and available 24-7. That's the news. Thanks for joining us. And don't forget, you vote, and then you'll hear your vote counted here on WYLN-TV and on our Facebook page. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road in Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicap accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. Packages are available to fit anyone's budget, and there is a restaurant and catering on site. The facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor parties, private parties of any kind. Call 570-384-2314. WYLN CA 35's children's programming is designed with the specific purpose of serving the educational and informational needs of children. In compliance with FCC guidelines, a copy of the children's programming report is on file for public inspection at WYLN 1057 East 10th Street in Hazleton, Pennsylvania during normal business hours. To view the report online, visit FCC.org. Blaze Alexander Family Dealership is very proud to become a part of the Hazleton area. Come see us in Hazel Township or visit us online at blazehazelton.com. There's Chrysler, Dodge, Jeep, Ram, Buick, GMC, and Cadillac, and Mazda. Plus, a huge inventory of the finest quality pre-owned vehicles available, all with the Blaze Alexander lowest price guarantee. We have a long-held reputation for low prices, great selection, and top-notch service. Blaze Alexander Family Dealerships in Hazleton. We're taking the deals the other guys won't.
John's Family Restaurant in the Churchill Mall. Enjoy a full menu with all homemade food from breakfast, soups, sandwiches, entrees, and desserts. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner specials. The food is great. The price is right. Open Monday through Saturday, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., Sunday, 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. ATI Insulation Systems Incorporated, specializing in new and existing homes, batten blown in fiberglass and cellulose. Free estimates, fully. You're watching Mountaintop's Choice for news, weather, and live local sports. WYLN, we're your local network.